This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific, all stories to showcase local entrepreneurs and small business. Aloha, welcome to Ventures in Small Business. I'm Terry Funakoshi, director at the Patsy T. Mink Center for Business and Leadership. We're the only SBA Women's Business Center here in the state of Hawaii, and we're located at the YWCA Oahu. Today, our episode is How to Be an Artist in Business and Finding Your Niche, How to Stand Out and Stay Financially Solvent. The market is full of talented artists starting their own business, so it's crucial that aspiring art business owners find a way to stand out and again, stay financially solvent. Today, I'm speaking with Lari Sumie, Hawaii eco artist and filmmaker. Her company is Lari Sumie Studio. Lari is a Hawaii born artist and filmmaker who investigates environmental tensions between humans and nature. Her background is interactive, interactive media, animation, journalism, and design uniquely informs her videos, drawing, and installations. So that's a, that's a lot of things. So I'm so happy to introduce Lari today. Welcome, Lari. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have Lari here today, not only because she's an awesome artist, but I have to just pull this out. So this month, October, is Women in Small Business Month, and we just got a proclamation from the governor. So, woohoo! <laughs> so, Lari is actually one of our women small business champions, and she's going to tell us more about it. But, Lari, why don't you start by telling us, you know, some of your background? So, I'm born and raised from Hawaii. I grew up in Mililani. I went to Mililani High School, and I went to school on the mainland uh, at Bradley University for four years. I double majored in art and communications, and that's kind of what got me interested in graphic design. And so uh, I worked in graphic design and web design in San Francisco for many years, and then I went back to school and studied filmmaking and digital art in New York. And then when I moved back to Hawaii, I accidentally started a business uh, <laughs> doing creative stuff, so yeah. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of education. Yes, yes. So again, how, what motivated you to actually get into the art business? I actually didn't, um, I, you know, everyone says it's really hard to do and that people can't make a living doing this. It was really a passion that I had for native Hawaiian species. So I am really interested in learning more about our native plants and animals and the stories about them. And uh, when I was living in New York, I had decided to do this calendar for my friends and family. And um, I just said, well, I want to learn more about plants and animals in Hawaii. I made this calendar for fun, uh, just to give us Christmas gifts, and that kind of took off, and people wanted to buy my calendars, so I started making calendars, and then people would see the calendars. They said, oh my gosh, your birds look good on cards or other things, like tote bags. So I said, okay, I, I'll try to make a card or tote bag, and then I had a friend you know, introduce my work to somebody. Uh, my first client was the Bishop Museum shop. And that's how my business got started. It was sort of word of mouth, I guess, and people saying, I want to see your art on other things. So you kind of did on the side, was it? Yeah, like yeah, I was freelancing and I was doing some other freelance work. You still had a uh, full-time job? No, I, I was freelance. I've been freelancing. Well, before this, I was freelancing as a designer for maybe oh. like the last 10 years. Okay, good. Yeah. And you know, I have a, um, awesome questions to ask mm -hmm. you about your business, but yeah. I'm so excited. I have to just say that, um, Laurie is coming out with a 2019 calendar, mm -hmm. and she's actually dedicating it to MCBL to help um, women entrepreneurs mm -hmm. because it's the metamorphosis. So mm -hmm. I think we have a picture of the front cover that um, we can show you. But tell us about the new calendar. So this year's calendar, the theme is metamorphosis. The idea is to really look at the ecosystems of Hawaii, because in the past I kind of picked um, very, you know, birds or trees or flowers, and I wanted something that I could do all the different animals and also maybe do some Hawaiian insects. And so I was thinking how cool that when I looked at the pictures of all these animals and plants, 
but they change so much over the course of their lifetime. So for example, this, um, the image that I just, you just showed is a rare Kauai green sphinx moth that only lives in Kauai. It's super critically endangered. It's only been viewed 18 times. Wow. And I want more people to know these amazing things exist in, in Hawaii. And so I just love the idea that there's these animals that change over time, you know, like a butterfly or a parrotfish that changes color uh, because it changes gender in its lifetime. So I thought these are such, you know, interesting stories about plants and animals and things that are here that I want people to know about. That's great. Uh, yeah. So when is the calendar coming up? It's almost done. It's just about done. Um, it's going to press this week and I will be able to ship hopefully mid-week, mid-October. Great. The end of October. We're going to help you with that. You yeah. Know, Thank you so much for, you know, dedicating it to mm -hmm. the Patsy T. Mink Center yeah. and helping us. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get back to asking you, you know, the whole uh, artist niche. Mm -hmm. You know, can you tell us about, you know, why that's so important to stand out as an artist? I feel like art is really expressing something really specific about yourself and the way you see the world and the things that you care about. And so the more you can express you know, how specific and how unique you are and the work that you do represents how you see that, I think people, it'll resonate with more people um, in terms of work that doesn't look like everybody else's work. And so because I'm just focused on um, native Hawaiian species and those stories, and I'm, I'm a storyteller, so it's not just I'm going to find a really pretty thing and paint it or draw it. It's like I want to know all I can about it. I talk to scientists. I go to the Bishop Museum a lot and work with the curators there. Um, so I can really understand the story of these animals and plants and, you know, scientists know they're super fascinating everywhere else in the world um, because they have such unique uh, qualities that are unique because of Hawaii. And so that's something that I'm fascinated by and I want to put that in the work and also be able to talk to it when I share my work with people. Right. So, um, you know, having this niche uh, mm -hmm. in the eco world, you actually get to work with companies and museums, like you mm -hmm. said. So how has that helped you in the business side? I feel like because I'm, I, I kind of am an artist conservationist in a way, I, I am basically um, telling that same story and message about what we have in Hawaii that is so beautiful and rare and that needs protecting and needs people to care about it. And I want Kiki to care about it. I want people to, who are visiting to care about this because we have wherever we live in the world, things that we care about that are rare and unique to where we come from and that makes that place unique and special. So I want people to make those connections of finding those things that are special to a place and then making it part of their lives. So that's why I make things like t-shirts and pillows and things that you can have in your home and that you can interact with nature every day. So I know um, you have an upcoming project. I mm -hmm. think we have an image of the your logo that you created. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? So I'm working on an uh, art exhibition for the Lancaster Museum of Art about the Hawaiian crow, which is one of the rarest birds in the world. There are only about 150 in total in the world. And so um, I'm working on that art piece that's going to be in January in California. And because the people with the Alala project were so incredibly helpful, I offered to design their logo for them because they needed a new logo for their project. And so they'll use it for their outreach, for stickers, when they go to students in schools to have a, a logo that really represents where the Alala now is because it was previously uh, extinct in the wild. And so they recently, last fall, released wild, 12 wild Alala and I got to see them and it was amazing to just see these birds that haven't, you haven't heard them in the forest for, I don't know, 15 so years. And then to be in a forest and hear the sound of the birds singing and calling it was, it was just chicken skin, you know, and so uh, I wanted to give back and give something to them for helping me make my own work so they can do their work. Oh, so tell us, you know, that's very inspiring. And, and mm -hmm. I know you said earlier when we were talking that inspires your product. Yes. Can you show us some of the product um, that you've done? Uh, so these are some calendars. So these are some other calendars I've done. This is the um, my 2014 bird calendar and from the bird calendar turned into like all sorts of other products. So I ended up making some uh, t-shirts, I made some cards, and then now I'm making um, phone cases. And all of the artwork uh, that 
all of the lines that I carry are originated from the calendars. So it sort of is like I'll create new work for the calendar and that, that ends up being on products later. And it usually is somebody who will say, I wish you would make a XYZ tote bag, t-shirt, and then I'll go and make it and then people will buy it. So Yeah, I noticed, um, I was looking at this earlier. Mm -hmm. So you even use eco um, packaging? Yes, yes, because as you know, for example, I, I hope most people in Hawaii know that we have a plastic problem mm -hmm. in our oceans, so I wanted to make uh, packaging that had no plastic in it and make it biodegradable so it doesn't cr create more trash in the landfill. This is 100% recycled. Um, this is also, our, you know, cotton. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just wanted packaging to also be telling the same message about protecting our environment and sustaining our planet um, by not contributing to um, the waste that we already are producing. So in my little small way, I want to continue those kind of values through the packaging and the, the products that I make so they you know, align with my values in terms right. of the stories I want to tell. It's really yeah. cute, too. Thank I you. Like, I love it. It's one of my yeah. favorites. Thank you. So, okay, I know there's so many things, but I wanted to ask you about that documentary mm -hmm. that you worked on. It was so cute. Can you tell us about that? I think well, I have a picture of it. Well, that it's too. still in progress. So we okay. are, we've been, I actually moved home to work on the documentary. That's actually uh -huh. what brought me back to Hawaii. So I've been working on it for now for four years. We're doing a crowdfunding campaign yes. right now to raise money for it. But we already have distribution on PBS for National because we have some funding. And uh, yeah, we are telling the story of this native Hawaiian bird called the Palila that only lives in Hawaii on Mauna Kea. It's the only place it's ever lived or in the world is on the Big Island in, human, in, in, in recent history. And um, there's this amazing story of how the bird went to court to save itself. So they actually, the case is known as Palila v. Hawaii and the bird went to court. They brought a stuffed bird to court and the bird sued the state of Hawaii to save itself. And that was almost 40 years ago and the case is still going. And so, oh. um, yeah, there's just been a lot of people trying to save this bird and a lot of amazing story with this court case that I want to share. And when is it going to be done? <laughs> I'm hoping it'll be done next year. If not at the very latest, I hope 2020, because yeah, this is like the fourth year I've been working and researching and raising money and just kind of it takes a long time to make a feature length documentary, but right. it's been really fun and amazing. So that's the bird on the cover, right? The calendar. This bird, yes, that's it. Oh, he's going to be a popular. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, there's a, I mean, how often do you have an animal suing, and suing to save itself? Right. Like, that's pretty unique. So how can people help, um, you know, to help you with that documentary? Um, please uh, contribute to our crowdfunding campaign, uh, which is going on, I think, for the rest of the month. And uh, we are trying to raise money. And also just to show people that this is not just a Hawaii story. Like when we try to save things that make a place unique and special, this is a story that resonates in the rest of the United States and the world. Because this case actually established habitat protection for all endangered species in the United States. So this is, they teach this case in law school. You know, wow. that, that's how important this case is. So. So that's great. Mm -hmm. So we've learned a lot about your business, your niche, mm -hmm. you know, the, being eco-friendly. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a short break, one okay. minute. But when we come back, okay. I'm going to ask you the hard question about the how business. to sustain <laughs> your business. Yes, yes. So we'll be right back in one minute. Thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey, where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. 
Aloha and welcome back. We're talking with Lar with Lari. Okay, now here's the hard question. So you know, you, you have your art. People love it. You're um, passionate about you know the birds and the mm -hmm. eagle and Hawaii. Now, how do you sustain a business model? Where do you go? What what resources uh, did you find? Uh, well, I read a lot of books because I'm kind of a nerd. So I just Googled and read lots of business books. And then I read business books about artists and being creative entrepreneurs. But when I needed um, more hands-on training, I heard about the Patsy Mink Center and was able to get some mentorship and training uh, through some oh, class uh, there and I, that has really helped me reframe and rethink how I do everything. Oh, that's great. So yeah. how did you find that resource? I think I just Googled it. I was like <laughs> looking for small business help in Hawaii and then I, that's how I came across it. Yeah. That's the answer for everything right now, yeah? Google. Yes, yes, <laughs> totally. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm glad you found the resource and you mm -hmm. had the help you needed. Um, so tell us more. After you took the course, you know, what was your next step? So my next step was to, you know, get someone to help me run the business and um, and basically because I'd been doing everything myself and, and being able to organize and get help. So I was able to hire an accountant and someone who's a business manager to manage the accounts for me so I can just focus on making the work. But I did for two years before that, I kind of had to test and figure out how to make a business doing this because I'd never done this kind of business. So before I had my own company doing creative design. So I, you know, billing hours and service-based business. I, so I knew how to do like invoicing and that kind of thing. But the actual product-based business was totally new and it's a completely different way of working. So that was just a huge learning curve of figuring out how do you price things? How do you sell retail? How do you sell online? How do you sell wholesale? How do you uh, make line sheets, I mean line sheets and catalogs, like figuring out how to do SKU numbers, like, you know, just things like that. I never, I have no background in retail, like I never even worked, you know, a mall job where I sold anything. So um, just the idea of SKUs, I'm like, what's a SKU? Like, how do I create SKUs? And, um, you know, just all that really basic stuff that people who know how to do this, they're like, oh yeah, like this is how you do it. But I had to learn and I just looked for books and internet resources to kind of figure out how to do that and um, but it only gets you so far you know so right. that was that was uh, good and bad and people I had a cousin's wife who had done some retail and she was very helpful in um, telling me when you're selling to uh, bigger shops and stores that they're what their expectations are you know how long it takes to get paid um, dealing with capital which I'm like huh like capital um, and just terms for selling uh, all that stuff I had to just she was really helpful in um, sharing how that works but Good. that being said each place that I wholesale at like they do things a little differently so right. it's not there's like a standard system that everyone uses. Well, it sounds good. It sounds like you had a good support system. Mm -hmm. uh, I know for artists it's hard. You have to brand yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you give us um, some advice? I know you, like social media and... Uh, um, I, I feel like the most challenging for the selling is that anxiety of like, oh my gosh, I have to sell myself. Because as an artist, you are your brand. You know, that is why my company's name is my name. Because as a professional artist, when you sign something that is what you're selling is you. You're selling part of your vision and you, so it's not like I can hide behind a logo and say, it's a company that I also have. So I feel like that authentic um, voice and being really consistent about how I'm messaging and expressing what I do and being not so shy about sharing my story, um, which is funny because I my job used to be telling other people how to you know, market their businesses and how to do social media. But when I had to do it for myself, I'm like, oh, I feel so self-conscious mm -hmm. uh, talking about myself or trying to um, promote my work in that way. So it, it, I think it's getting over that hump of shyness, I think, putting myself out there. And so on your website, is it like your portfolio? Or? No, I have a separate, I have two separate websites. I have my artist website um, for uh, galleries and um, museums you know, for curators who are interested in my work. And then I have a separate site for selling that's just like to buy things and also for wholesale cost retail people because uh, I also make, you know, just art that is uh, installation. So I have an installation at the Bishop Museum, for example, and that's not something you would buy in a store, you know, it's like a 
it's an artwork. So I do both, and I, I keep them separate just because the audience is totally different, right? So a curator at a museum or a gallery is not necessarily someone who wants to buy a T-shirt. Right, so that's a, that's a good point because as an artist, there's mm -hmm. so many different ways to actually make revenue. Mm -hmm. So again, like you're saying, you have two sites mm -hmm. because you want to do wholesale retail, mm -hmm. commission work, yep. licensing. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what's your advice on that? How do you know if that's the route you should go as an artist? I feel like you need to know who your audience is. So if your goal is you know, just to be a museum artist and you know, to be in these collections, like obviously you're not going to be selling at a gift shop, um, but the reason I ended up thinking, because before I was like, oh, I don't, you know, I'm not going to do stationery and stuff. But then I was at the MoMA store in New York, and I noticed, okay, well, Picasso has a calendar selling at the MoMA, and he's also in a museum, so I can make a calendar of my art. I don't have to be dead first, <laughs> so I'm just going to, you know, make my calendar and put my art on products and not stress about it, you know. And, yeah. And I know you also did a pop-up, yeah. um, and mm -hmm. you did some trade shows. I think we have a picture of your um, Christmas. Yeah, so I did a Christmas pop-up in J. Crew at Ala Moana last Christmas, and I was there for three different uh, days, and it was just a really great experience to um, engage with a different audience uh, and to also be in a mall setting, which I'd never done that before. It's very uh, different, and everyone at the staff at uh, J. Crew, they were so kind and really made me feel very welcome. So it was a good experience, and I would highly recommend other people to participate in things like artisan. I think it's called like an artist. It's their artisan program where they invite local artists into their shop. I, and I know you have so many more products coming out, and I I remember seeing your pillows. Mm -hmm. um, those are really cute. Yeah, I, I those, think I need some for Christmas. So. Yeah, so those kind of came about because I wanted um, something that people could have in their home that they could look at and use and um, yeah and they've been really popular so the one cool person who ended up buying it was uh, Maisie Hirono she bought like I think four of them and every time somebody goes to her office in Washington DC uh, she put them on the wall so everyone sends me pictures of uh, my artwork in her office so it's really cool that's great. You know, pillows. Maisie Hirona is a big advocate for small business. So. And she loves endangered Hawaiian birds, apparently, as well. So oh, there you go. Yeah. So, you know, we have a few minutes left, mm -hmm. and I, I want to wrap up by saying, you know, what are some of the challenges that you can share with us, um, you know, having your business in Hawaii? Yeah. Um, that you can share to any artist out there that's thinking of doing their business? So, I really tried to make everything in Hawaii at the beginning because I thought I want to support local, other local businesses um, to make my products, but I basically realized it's really hard to do at the right price point. And I said, okay, I don't want to send products in China because I know what that production cycle is, and yes, it's the cheapest way, but it's not the most ecologically sustainable. So I, I make it a goal now to just make sure all my products are made in the United States. Um, that's my criteria. And yeah, it's really, it's because of the cost of shipping everything into Hawaii and then the cost of labor is high, it's so hard to make stuff here. Uh, that being said, I have made some of my products, uh, my stationery and paper products here, but I think for the long haul, just for cost, um, I probably have to get everything made on the mainland just because the cost is really important. If you don't hit the right pr price points, you won't sell anything, even if you have a really great product. So your advice is, you know, uh, try to do as much local as possible, but cost is I feel issue. like cost is the number one thing of whether people will buy what you make. You know, if, if you make something brilliant that people want, it has to be priced right for the market and for your customer. Otherwise, you won't sell anything. And going from selling off my website to wholesale, like, that totally messed up my pricing because, like, I had to learn about keystoning, and then I'm like, <laughs> okay, I won't make any profit if I'm selling at this price point, and then how can I make it for less but still you know, have my eco credentials um, and run a business in Hawaii because you know, you're competing with companies that are selling things in Alabama where they're, yeah. it's much, much cheaper to run a business. So uh, once I kind of learned those things, I'm like, okay, well, I still want to be based here. I still want to make my work here. So how can I make sure the economics of that works and, um, and get the pricing to a point where 
I'm not breaking even, but making a decent profit because there's definitely been other items I've sold where when I crunch the numbers, I'm like, I am making so little. My, my margins are so low that it's not worth make, making the product. But it took me a while to figure out what that process was because you have a cool idea and you're like, I'm gonna make this thing, it'll be great. And then you're like, wait, I'm not making that much on this. So maybe I should try to make something that for the, a time and effort, um, I'll actually earn a profit. So I'm smiling because my, my background's retail and mm -hmm. I, I hear you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, I have to uh, commend you for such great product assortment. Thank you. Because you know, you have something for your personal, you have, you know, uh, for gifts, yeah. for the home. and I. Uh, we forgot to mention that oh, we also do educational yes. pieces. Yes, so these are um, this using my artwork of birds. I wanted kids to be able to learn the names of the birds, so I made Go Bird uh, for an event at the Bishop Museum, and as just a test to see if people would like it. And just, just you know, because you have to say, "Oh, do you have a right. Hoyo or whatever?" And the kids really got it, and they were got they really got into it, and it was um, a really cool project because I wanted to do something that was fun. Yeah, they're so, so educational. They're so cute. Yeah. You know, so um, we have so many um, different products that you did that's great and I know you have more. So can you tell people where to go to find your product? Yes, so my website is lauriesumierstudio.com and I sell at about 10 different stores also um, on the Big Island, Kauai and Oahu. So if you don't like buying on a website, you can also buy some of my items at, a, at stores. On my, and there's a stockist site on the website if you prefer to shop in person. But our newest item are the uh, phone cases. And I kind of wanted to do phone cases just because I haven't seen a lot of local art on cases. And I like the idea of having it with you all the time and you know, having your bird or your turtle, your honu. I know, um, these are so cute. Yeah, with so, you. So thank you so much, yeah. Laurie, for joining us. And I just want to remind everybody that Laurie is a small business champion, and she's part of the Shop Small initiative to, to really help small businesses here in Hawaii. And if you go to um, the Shop Small website, you'll find um, champions just like Laurie, and we're going to be celebrating all month. It's a year-round um, celebration, mm -hmm. so this month and next month. Yeah. We have our one big ben, uh, event at Honolulu Night Market oh, on fun. November 24th. Yeah. So your yeah. calendar will be really ready. Yes, yes, yes. We'll be able to sell everything. Yeah. So. And then thank, it's, you. thank you so much for having me. It's been really great to share my story and to kind of explain like why I do so many different things but you know all of the things that I do whether it's documentary film or products is to kind of tell the story of Hawaiian animals and plants and to get them in everyone's everyday lives because some of these animals are so hard to see I like the idea that they're part of your life in a way that you don't gotta go up a mountain and go look at the bird you know it's because it's hard it, it takes yeah. like five hours and then you gotta wait to hope shows up so this is a much easier way to see these things yes. thank you for everything you do Lari. <laughs> yeah and thank you everybody for tuning in to adventures in a small business and we'll see you again next week